Hi, my name is Richard. My name is Brittany. And we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Today, my beautiful wife and I want to talk to you about the talk before the walk. The talk before the walk. My beautiful wife and I, we are firm believers that before you invest, you need to learn to investigate. Isn't that true? How many times do we fail to investigate and then we have to pay a price for it? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of what happened when my wife and I and some friends went out to eat. We went out to eat in San Diego, right on the beach, and we actually went for some nice tacos. They were actually having a special that day. $3 for a taco. They were really good tacos. Well, my wife and I, we ended up ordering filet mignon tacos. They were absolutely incredible. We were loving every single bite of those tacos. So we were having a good time fellowshipping with our friends. And then the waitress came at the end with our bill. And I look at the bill and I looked at it again and I noticed the bill was off and I told the waitress, if you don't mind, could you please come here? And she says, hey, what's going on? And I said, you made a slight problem with this bill. And she said, well, what do you mean? I said, this bill, this isn't our bill. She goes, no, 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 this is your bill. I said, no, no, this is not our bill. And she goes, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, the tacos are three, it's $3 for a taco. And all we did was order five tacos and the bill is over $60 for five tacos. That, that's not our bill. And she goes, yeah, yeah, that's your bill. And I said, well, what's the problem here? She said, well, the problem is, is that yes, it's $3 for the tacos, but in the bottom right hand corner, in the fine print, you'll notice that filet mignon tacos, you have to add an extra $5. And I said, oh, I get it. I didn't see that. She goes, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So your tacos were like $8 with tax. And I said, got it. Take my money. It's all yours. When we left that day, my wife and I were laughing because it was probably the most tacos we've ever spent, especially here in San Diego. 60 bucks for some tacos. They were really great. But what was the problem here? The problem was that my wife and I, we didn't read the fine print. We didn't go and ask questions. And you see, what happens to a lot of us, since we don't ask questions, since we don't have these conversations, we actually pay a price for it. This is the reason why my wife and I want to talk to you about the talk before the walk. And so we love what the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 1.10. It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and in thought. Mm -hmm. So the scripture is teaching us about unity. And how do you have unity? You have unity when the two of you are in agreement. And when you're in disagreement, then what you're going to have is disunity. Mm -hmm. And I love that Jesus teaches us that when two agree on earth on anything, that it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to have the favor of God in your marriage and you want blessing overflow, then it's important that you two agree uh, that you agree on things in your marriage. And so today we want to talk to you about five different talks that you should have before the walk. Now, some of these talks are going to be a little bit more difficult than others. And we don't suggest that you have these talks two weeks into dating. Some of them, you know, you might want to wait until you're really serious in your relationship and talking about getting engaged, or maybe you're already engaged. And if you are, then we highly encourage you to have all of these talks. So the first talk that we want to talk to you about today is the non-negotiable talk. You guys, non-negotiables are so important. When you're single, you should have already your non-negotiables in mind. For instance, when I was single, I knew that I wasn't going to date anybody who wasn't a man of God and who sought him daily. And so I had my non-negotiables as a single woman. Then getting into a relationship, my husband and I had non-negotiables that, you know, we were going to be pure and honor God with our bodies that we weren't going to have sex before marriage. You know, I love what the scripture teaches us in 1 Corinthians 10, 23. It says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say I'm allowed to do anything, 
but not everything is beneficial. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important to set non-negotiables because the reality is, is that when you're in a relationship, you can do whatever you want, yeah. but not everything is good for you. And so if you don't set non-negotiables, then what are you doing? You're setting yourself up for failure. You see what non-negotiables are, are they your, they're your boundaries. It's the line that you draw on the sand that you will not cross under any circumstance. And that's why it's super important that you set your non-negotiables when you're in a relationship. So when Britt and I, we came together, that was one big conversation we had, the non-negotiable talk. One non-negotiable for us is that every day we would seek the Lord. You know, Matthew 6.33 teaches us, it says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The scripture doesn't say first seek Brit and then go on with your day. It doesn't say first seek your job. No, it says first seek God. Here's what we understand. When we learn to first seek God in our everyday basis of our life, we know that our relationship will be prosperous. Therefore, that is a non-negotiable for us. Another non-negotiable that we have is that every Sunday we would make it to church. And we really are strong believers in that because we believe that we should be in the presence of God. We believe that we should be amongst a certain people. Why? Because fellowship is great, especially getting into the house of God, worshiping, praying, receiving from our pastors. We're firm believers of this. This is just some non-negotiables we have, but you may have different non-negotiables with your partner. You see, if you don't have non negotiables what happens in your life is you cross lines mm -hmm. and the truth is is that you'll always cross a line when a line isn't drawn therefore set non-negotiables when you set non-negotiables what it's really doing for your life it's actually setting up your life so you don't have chaos you don't have stress you're not anxious about certain things why because you came together and had the non-negotiable talk. We really encourage you, when you have the non-negotiable talk, you're setting your relationship up for it to be prosperous and for it to be healthy. So we really encourage it, have the non-negotiable talk. And the second talk that you need to have before the walk is the vision talk. You know, Proverbs 29, 18 says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Now in the same way, where there is no vision, your relationship will perish. You guys, you wouldn't jump onto an airplane with no final destination in mind. That would be crazy because you'd be flying around in circles and eventually you're gonna run out of gas and you're gonna crash. Now the same is true for your relationship and for your future marriage. If you don't have a final destination, then you guys are gonna be spinning your wheels, going nowhere, and eventually you're just gonna run out of gas, you're gonna run out of energy, and you're gonna crash. And that's why it's so important that you have a vision for your marriage because what your vision does is it gives you drive. It gives you something to fight for. It keeps your relationship fresh. It keeps it on fire. It keeps it exciting. Um, we get asked the question a lot that, you know, what do we do if we don't have the same vision? Well, that's okay. You don't necessarily have to have the same exact vision. Maybe one of you is called to be a doctor and maybe another one of you is called to just be an at-home mom or whatever it may be for your future marriage, you just have to agree to come together and support one another's vision. So you don't necessarily have to have the same vision, but you have to agree to support one another's vision. With my wife and I, at the beginning of every year, we talk about our vision. And what we do is we write out a dream board. And our dream board, we talk about you know things that we wanna achieve this year, certain goals that we wanna hit. And from there, we come into agreement. And when we do that, what we're really doing is we're setting up our year. You know, we believe if we're gonna have a if we're going to have a year where we conquer it, then we need to come together and set a vision. You know, a lot of the times people don't set a vision. This is the reason why they walk around aimlessly and not really being purposeful. We believe that relationships that are healthy are relationships that are purposeful. They know, they know where they're going. You see, with my wife and I, we always want to support each other. So when we bring the vision in mind, the next thing that we do is we make sure that every decision goes along with our vision. So if the decision doesn't go along with our vision, then we won't make that decision. Why? 
because it doesn't help us to get to the goal that we're trying to achieve. Friends, we really encourage you, get a vision for your life. We encourage you to take some time with each other. Go out, have a coffee, go, go get a tea, do something. Talk with each other, talk about each other's vision, and from there, make sure that every decision aligns with that vision. Okay. The third talk is the credit talk. Yes, the credit talk. You know, the Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I love this passage because it teaches us to run with perseverance. The truth is, it's going to be hard for us to run with perseverance when we're running with debt. This is the reason why we have to have the credit talk because statistics teach us that most marriages end up in divorce because of finances. You see, when it comes to God, God is looking at character. But when it comes to the world, the world cares about credit. Yeah. Credit matters because what happens one day when you guys, you know, want to get married and you're thinking about, you know, the venue, you're talking marriage and you're talking about house, the, the house that you want, or maybe the condo that you want, or maybe you're talking about certain vehicles that you want to buy, but you guys haven't really talked about credit and now you're trying to get a venue and you're trying to, I don't know, put it on your credit card, but the credit card's maxed out and you're trying to get another credit card, but you can't because your credit's bad and then everything just ends up going wrong. And then you're talking about, you know, your house, but the truth is, is that if you have bad credit, it's going to be hard for you to get a loan. See, the truth is, this conversation is big because this conversation could affect your future. It could affect what you're trying to do. That's why it's important to have the credit talk. Yes, this conversation isn't easy. Yes, this conversation isn't sexy, but it's important to have because if you don't have it, it's going to eventually uh, um, prolong the things that you're called to do in your marriage. So we really encourage you to have that credit talk. That's so good. And when we were dating and talking about engagement, we had to have the credit talk. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you guys, in my past, I didn't really understand credit. Quite frankly, I didn't care about it. I didn't understand the importance of it. And so I had some unpaid bills on my credit report you guys I was not like I was not on it mm -hmm. and here's my husband when we first started dating who is in the process of buying a house and I'm just like he's asking me about my credit I'm like why are you asking me about my credit like who cares about that stuff like why are you asking me about my credit like I was embarrassed because I hadn't taken care of mine and so I I got really convicted by God and God's like hey you can't just keep things in the dark you have to bring things to the light mm -hmm. and and so I started doing some research and I started figuring out where I could get a credit report and I found a free credit report online and I printed it out and I was I was like pleasantly surprised because it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. I was like a couple thousand dollars in debt. So I was like, thank you. Like that's not that big mm -hmm. of a deal. And so I brought in my credit report and I was honest with him. I said, you know, I, I've only had one little minor credit card in my life. I, I didn't really manage my credit that well, but this is what I'm going to be bringing to the table in our marriage and you know I started being proactive about paying things off I hadn't even paid taxes in seven years so before we got married I made sure to pay all my taxes off mm -hmm. you see so credit isn't necessarily a deal breaker mm -hmm. in getting into marriage but it is a deal breaker if the person is unwilling to start taking yeah. care of mm -hmm. things see if I would have came to him with unpaid taxes and a really bad credit report and said yeah but I'm not really gonna do anything about it that's a deal breaker because it shows that I have bad character. But see, if the person is willing to step forward and start making steps to clear their bad credit or to pay unpaid debt, then you know that you have a keeper because you have somebody who's willing to fight for things in life. They're willing to, you know, make their wrongs right. And so this is why it's so important to have this credit talk before you get into marriage so you know what you're bringing into the table. The fourth talk that you need to have before the walk is the kid talk. Psalm 127.3 teaches us that children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. 
You see, children are a reward from the Lord because what they are is the gift of life.、Mm. But what happens when the gift of life actually becomes the curse of death? And what I mean by this is, my husband and I have a couple of friends who are married, and before they got married, they didn't have the kid talk. And so, what the wife didn't know is that the husband was so adamant about having a boy, and that he wasn't going to stop at anything unless he got his boy. See, with her, she didn't care. She loves kids no matter what she has, and so they ended up having all girls. Now. Not having the kid talk actually almost caused them to get a divorce because he wanted to continue having children, but she wanted to stop with the two that they had. You guys, it's so important that you have the kid talk. You need to know: Does gender matter to you guys? And what happens if you have all of one gender? Are you going to continue to try for the next gender? Or what happens when one of you just wants one child, but the other wants four? Are you going to lower your stand? To meet just having the one, or are you guys going to meet somewhere in the middle? It's so important that you come to an agreement before getting married because this is something that we've seen cause some of our friends a lot of chaos in their marriage. And so, to avoid、uh, entering into marriage and, and creating all this chaos when the time comes, talk it out beforehand. Come to an agreement. Yeah, no, it's true. You know, the Bible teaches us. That we can plan our way, but it's God who guides our steps.、Mm-hmm. You know, for my wife and I, that's been a big desire of our hearts to have children, and we wanted to have children on our second after our second year of marriage, but God kind of put a hold on that. And the reason why is because our speaking schedule. We were out speaking, you know, in the world. And there's a couple things that we needed to do this year, and God kind of switched things up on us. But the beautiful thing about my wife and I is that we know what God is doing in our lives, and we just rolled with it. And you know, sometimes that's going to happen. You guys are going to plan to have children, and maybe you want it the second year, the third year after your marriage, and you're like, "Oh, it's time for us to have kids," and something might happen. But what we believe, what you should do, is talk to your partner about it, come into agreement with it, and keep planning and believing for that child. You know, child, ch- child, children are a gift from the Lord. This is why it's so important to have the kid talk. The fifth talk, which is our final talk, is called the past talk. You know, the Bible teaches us in Philippians three thirteen, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Haven't you noticed the more bags you bring with you on an airplane, it will always cost you more money? You see, the same principle applies when it comes to our relationships. The more bags we bring on our journey, the more it's going to cost us. This is why it's imperative to talk about the past. The past. Is not an easy subject to talk about. It's actually a tough subject to talk about because you have to be vulnerable with each other. And the past talk could be any talks ranging from、um, maybe your sexual partners, how many partners you have sex with, or maybe a drug history, or maybe just something in your past that God is really telling you to bring up in this relationship. You see, the reason why. Britain, I believe it's important to have the past talk, is because it's hard to move forward when you still have the past in your mind.、Mm-hmm. It's hard to get a grip on life, a grip on your relationship when the past is messing with you. You see, what Britain and I did in our relationship is we had a past talk, and the reason for it is because we didn't want the enemy to have anything on us.、Mm-hmm. And here's what we mean by that: you know, sometimes what the enemy can do is he could start telling you and reminding you about your past and certain things, and you know, the the enemy will start saying like, "Oh, well, your partner doesn't know about this, or what happens when he finds out about that?、Mm-hmm. You didn't tell him these things." So what happens is, is he starts putting you in a position where you end up not. Being vulnerable, where you're not transparent and you're not open, and whatever you don't talk about, you don't get free from. You know, there's an old saying that goes, "You're only as sick as your secrets." We believe that when you open up your secrets, when you have these type of conversation, it brings healing into your relationship. You know, what Britt and I do is we make sure that we never allow the enemy to have bullets in his gun.、Yeah. The way that we do that is we actually take the bullets out by talking about. Our past by talking about certain things that will help our relationship to prosper. So good, and one of、uh, the 
the past talk, it wasn't an easy talk, yeah. especially for myself, because for those of you who don't know, I was in the adult film industry for seven years of my mm -hmm. life. I didn't know Jesus yeah. growing up. I was a wild child. I was crazy without Jesus. And so here I meet this man who is a preacher and leading the young adult ministry. And, you know, he knew about my past. But once we started dating, mm -hmm. that's when he started asking me, questions about it. And honestly, I was still, you know, ashamed of some of the details, like how many partners have you slept with? How many movies did you, did you make? Yeah. You know, he wanted to know these things because like he said, he didn't want there to be secrets in our marriage. And the reality is, is that if somebody can't handle your past and they just don't deserve to walk with you in the future mm. and the right person will be graced yes. for you, every ounce of you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so in those moments when I felt a little bit ashamed and I just wanted to like run away and hide and not answer the questions, the Holy Spirit would remind me, he would say, Brittany, I cannot work through your lies, but I can work through the truth. Mm. So just be open, yeah. be honest. Yeah. There were times where, you know, I knew that my husband and I or boyfriend at the time were going to hang out. And so I would be on my knees praying, God, please grace him for whatever conversation mm -hmm. might come up for whatever question he might have, like give him the grace to handle this because I really love this man and if he's for me God then you'll grace him for mm. me and that's exactly what God did God answered my prayers but you know the past talk if you have a dark past or maybe you feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about it you know there's a time and a season to yes. talk about it this is what I was talking about with you in the beginning is that you don't have to have this conversation two weeks into dating you mm. can set your boundary and say hey I don't feel comfortable talking yeah. about this right now but as time progresses and we get a little bit more serious, mm -hmm. then we can have that conversation. Yep. So make sure that you're in prayer and that you're spirit led, but also don't hide anything when the time comes and the spirit leads you to begin to have the past talk. Be open and be honest. Don't fear losing the person. Mm -hmm. You know, my father-in-law always says that if you're afraid to lose them, then you shouldn't even have them because mm -hmm. then what that person becomes is an idol in your life. God is number one and who he has for you is going to be absolutely perfect for you and they are going to be grace for you. Thank you, family, so much for tuning in with us. We pray that this message encouraged you, uplifted you, and we believe the best for your relationship. And remember, before you invest, investigate. Also, guys, we just wrote a couple of books. It's a set of books, and they're called Fresh Fire. My husband wrote one to the men from his perspective, and mine is written to the women in my perspective. It's a 14-day challenge, and we want you guys to join us on this 14-day challenge. You can go ahead and click the link below for more information. Hey, as you join us on this 14-day challenge, not only are you going to grow closer to your partner, but you're also going to grow closer in your relationship relationship with the Lord. It is a win-win. We love you guys and we hope that you have a blessed day. At this time, we would like to pray for you. So if you could, please bow your heads for prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for this talk, Lord. We pray that this talk would give them wisdom, Lord, insight, and revelation, Lord. We pray, Lord, for every single couple as well, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would strengthen their relationship, you would protect their relationship, and you would guide their relationship. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. We pray fresh fire, fresh anointing over their lives right now, God. God, we thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do in their lives, Lord. And we ask this, Father, in your name, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray. Amen.